Our focus in the last few videos was to develop the idea that complexity is knowledge and in turn, scalability is all about managing complexity. We talked about how data models are central to this process and how graphs are a superior solution. It is time now to move on to some applications and for that, we'll describe a design pattern that naturally emerges from the graph model, composition. As a first example of graph composition, we can start simple. In fact, we have already seen as we were creating our recommendation system. Path composition is a trivial case, but still exhibits the features we are interested in. If we are after all the connections between two nodes, the cipher pattern we can use would look like a generic path description. But if we look at this query as the composition of multiple possible paths, we can start separating them out in our queries and get increasingly specific about the match we are after. We could limit the search space by relationship count, precise pattern, and so on. Path expansion is also a composition operation. Two separate path patterns may have common endpoints, which means that as data gets added to the database, paths may join to produce longer traversals that match our queries. This is a case where paths compose in series, creating larger structures that are discovered without explicit user action. In these examples, we talk about graph composition because multiple paths exist in the database, but we can fine-tune our queries to treat arbitrary subset of these as a single graph. In essence, the complete database can be thought of as a composition of multiple overlapping graphs that can be treated independently or in combination. If you already have experience with Cypher, this will be immediately familiar to you and may seem like a very trivial distinction, but it does form the basis for more interesting techniques. Let's use the same approach, but this time apply it to a slightly more complicated example, value ranges. Continuing with our web shop example, our purchase entities will have some time stop associated with them, which we can use for filtering or range queries. We can also elevate the time stop to a tree root by extracting, for example, the day of the week and see all purchases in the database as children of that route. The data remains essentially the same, but now we have reframed our database as the composition of five subgraphs. These kinds of operations can lead you to write more precise or more generic queries without affecting performance, because the most efficient access path will always be determined by the Neo4j query planner, taking into consideration cost metrics, presence of indexes, and so on. This leaves you free to write queries in the way that makes sense for your case, even combining multiple decomposition techniques in a single database. But we can do more than write more expensive queries. In Neo4j 4.0, we introduced Fabric, an addition to Cypher that allows for querying multiple Neo4j databases at the same time with a single query. The main realization that led us to Fabric is that any two graphs can be composed to form a greater whole. There should be no reason that these graphs must be contained in the same database or have a pre-established common schema between them. Because graphs compose naturally, any collection of them can be brought together and as long as we can identify meaningful connections among them, we can extract knowledge from their combination. We can apply this idea to the day range example from before. We can choose to have a separate database for each day of the week and query them over via fabric as if they were a single graph. At the same time, each individual graph can form an independent administrative entity with its own backup schedule, hardware, or access rules. Fabric makes all this transparent because it doesn't make assumptions about schema or store layout. In the graph model, scalability is achieved through composition. 
So far, we have assumed that there is a common schema and that we have found a way to break it into pieces. But that process can be reversed to create a common graph out of multiple schemas. For instance, we could have chosen to store user comments in a database separately from purchase information. The schema would end up looking different between the two databases, but we could still use Fabric to bring them together and make better recommendations because they share logical connections. In both databases, users will be present and they can be duplicated between the two or even lie in a separate third database dedicated to user accounts. Whatever the case may be, the logical connection is there, so we can create cross-database queries, treating all graphs as a single entity and compose them to drive whatever use case we have in mind. Graph composition is a powerful concept, and we are barely scratching the surface. Fabric offers a unique perspective to database scalability and is fully integrated with Neo4j, allowing complicated setups for horizontal or vertical scalability, data isolation or hybrid transactional analytics setups. But we will not go any deeper in graph database modeling techniques because there are a few more topics we need to cover. Join me next time, where we will finally reach the goal of unifying transactional and analytics workloads under a single concept, that of the full spectrum database.